up guys it's Stan caution welcome back to some more sieve idol and this is my run with the different race so as you know when you do the reset you can select rome and athens right now and i decided to do a athens run honestly it's not that crazy so the unique wonders on the map are poseidon it's actually pretty cool early game because each building you will build next to it will go to level 20 straight away and you can switch those buildings around. That's actually pretty convenient. But getting level 20 uh, buildings is actually not that hard. So overall, uh, closer to the mid game, this becomes pretty useless. And the second wonder is Aphrodite. And her bonus is getting one builder capacity multiplier for each level when upgrading buildings over level 20. So it feels like a good bonus because when you upgrade the building further, it will become slower. Let's see our level 30 building. If it will be upgraded to level 31, it will take one hour right now. My god. And Aphrodite contributes 10 of those multipliers here. Building it without it will be even slower, but on the other hand, the roll multiplier will allow it to produce three times more stuff at this point. So I'm not sure, maybe four times. One, two, three. I'm, uh, anyway, it will be way better than it is right now, and I'm not sure if it's worth it, because building something that high takes forever. Because, for example, upgrading it to level 21 will take only six minutes, so this is like about 10 times more so yeah i think that this is not that effective as the bonuses from the alps but also they got the unique building parthenon the unique wonder when it's being constructed we will get the new uh great person so that's plus one great person for your run seems pretty cool we also get statue of zeus that will move resources next to it and uh, if there will be tier one building they will get plus five production and that should be pretty cool as well. Let's actually try to use that. So yeah, by default, the wood production is 8. And at level 10, it's 80 in comparison with... Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, at level 10, it's 80 already in comparison with like level 20 gives us 60. So that's a pretty good multiplier for sure. But um, does it worth it in the long run? I'm not sure. Because you will get different resources here and you can get only one building of each type. But then you can upgrade them to the really high values in order to get the better bonuses. So at level 20, it produces 160 wood, 120 water. And comparison is like pretty good. And you can't actually compare it with the normal buildings because it's doing way more. So those two are unique wonders of this race. I kind of like it on one hand. On another hand, it doesn't worth it, to, in my opinion, because it, take, it takes too long to make use of them. But it might be a better strategy for a long-term playthrough. Something that lasts for weeks, because when you will upgrade your buildings higher than level 30, wow, that will take a while without this builder boost that we have over here. And yeah, you can see that all the stuff here is pretty chaotic. We got a lot of uh, stuff moving around i've got some new tests here for the warehouses being used to supply the housing it doesn't work as well i always got issues here and there but at least right now we know about the core mechanics a little bit we have a water that have to be surrounded by wheat farms that will be surrounded by livestock farms flour mills and then bakeries and cheese makers and the problem with the livestock farm here that uh, if you will have too much stored milk, it will stop producing anything. I had this issue in one of my farms and they decided not to do anything. That was annoying. So if you want to get rid of some stockpiles that you don't need, like this one, for example, look at that. It have the full storage of milk and it doesn't produce anything because of that. You can delete specific resource in the storage and bam, it can work again and produce meat. Nice. Same for all the buildings. If something gets stuck because of that, you can manually go through that. And I also had a lot of issues on this run with my workers going down to like 1000 from the basic uh, huts and basic apartments, houses, those kind of things. So yeah, keep those when you upgrade to the higher tier buildings because that will allow you to recover. 
otherwise I wouldn't be able to get those things back. By the way, guys, if you want to make copy of the building, I don't know if I showed it in the beginner's guide or not, you can select the building and press middle mouse button. That will allow you to create the copy of the same building, which is pretty cool. There we go. Our wonder is complete and we get the new great person of classical age this time. We got one of those guys. So if we'll get the second one, we can upgrade it to level two, I think. Let's get Socrates. Okay. Moreover, guys, we unlock the trade. We got the map now, the world map, where we will place our town. Honestly, there are not that many dots as I thought there will be. And you can place it anywhere and put your tariff. The tax when somebody will go through your land. Depending on that, people who will move around to trade with one another will have to pay you the fee. You can move around this area as well. Uh, there is a cooldown on that action. Moreover, when you will do rebirth, your position will be cleared and then you will have to find it again. And uh, it will be randomly assigned for you at first, I think. Or you will have to pick it manually, I'm not sure. But yeah, I've got six great people from this run. Maybe we'll be able to upgrade someone. And guys, if you were wondering uh, how, what I did, I've made two guides in between so you can watch those. They can be part of this playthrough series. And I will start with Rome again because this one seems to be more convenient for me. We need to choose great person from last rebirth. Uh, different eras. Interesting. Is it like a... F oh, mix clicked. Oh my God. Who did I pick? Let's upgrade this one. Level two now. So that's two signs from busy workers. Who do we have as a great person right now? No, we don't have anyone. We could select one uh, additional uh, great people for last run because we got enough empire value in order to get the free one. Okay, okay. We got we got Agamemnon, I think. Stone core and marble works production. I'm okay with that. That's a good one. And in our new run, we got extremely lucky. Why? We unlocked most of the map. A. B. We unlocked Alps already, so we get the multiplier bonus and we don't need to explore anymore. We can use up all those resources, build our production lines as much as possible, saturate everything, get tier 1 buildings to like level 20, level 25, and then use search, find the grotto and get them plus 5 levels, that will be level 30, that will be very powerful if we can pull it off, but why the hell not? That's the plan. So yeah, basically because of the Alps, because of this building, Rome is so much better because it gives one production capacity every 10th level of building. That's a multiplier basically. And at level 30, that will be times three production. The Athens don't have that. And this is very strong in order to optimize your production. I don't know, maybe late game it will be more even. Maybe as you get more great people, more multipliers, it will be one be that powerful. But early game for newer players, Rome is a way to go, guys. And yeah, guys, we can already build our housing. Uh, there are a lot of water deposits here. So we'll get the houses here. Let's go. Also, in this run, I want to change the um, priorities for everything. So I want to manually assign priorities for all the buildings. I wonder if they will carry on to the new game. But for that, we need the new research. Let's get the horseback riding and herding. That will allow us to actually do those optimizations. Yeah, they will save up. The priority will stay as well. So what I want to do, I want to test the warehouse in the middle of this like um, hex that will allow those towns, uh, those houses to pick up straight from the warehouse. Probably. I'm not sure. So because of that, I want the production priority here to be lower. Uh, no, that will not have workers. So the main idea that we want to prioritize everything that way, uh, if we will run out of resources, Nothing bad will happen. We will still have all our town, all our workers ready for action. And we won't be low on them because it happened to me several times as I level up. Those things go down and then I have to manually recover that. They don't want to do stuff because we got low production of something and it's horrible. So I'm giving houses. Ah, we don't have it yet. So while we have some spare time, let's upgrade some of those buildings to level 20. Also, maybe we can get some technology that will give us additional builders. 
No, not really. We got only land trade that we need. Okay. So, priority for housing will be 10 because those things need to have everything that they need at their first request because that means that we will have workers. If we will not support them well enough, that means that they will not have the resources, we won't have the workers, and everything will go down. All right. Input capacity two times. It can go all the way to three times, actually. It will work. Apply to all set as default. As for the max stockpile, let's see. I want it to be, well, maximized. Total storage is 600. They require 10. Uh, it's 60 times more. So we can get it to 50 times more. And it will still be good. But I don't want to go that high. Let's go to uh, 30 times. That will be good enough. It's important not to go too much, too high. Otherwise, mm, we might have issues here and we will have too much of one of the resources. We don't want that. And usually one set of houses is enough. If you want to speed up, you can build two of those. But for the long term, this should be the better option and then move on to apartments straight away. Also, you would like to slowly upgrade your basic huts here to level 20. But before doing that, you want to make sure that at least a couple of your houses, half of those, are level 10. Otherwise, you won't have enough workers. By the way, guys, when you get the great people in your current run, I'm not sure if I told you about that or not, the great people of this run are additional multipliers. So you can have your permanent uh, tank of Shank, for example, it will give you half signs from idle workers and get one in your current run and they will add up uh, resulting in one science per second so per idle person there we go it works so yeah uh, keep it in mind when you are planning your strategy it's not only upgrading the current uh great people if you have enough copies of them it's also giving you the bonuses straight away and they will be added to your pool and they will be added to your pool of permanent great people after you finish your run. So right now I won't be able to do this upgrade because I don't have him in my inventory yet. All right, let's get back to priorities, right? So for the house, we got priority of 10 as we decided. So it will be the most important building for us. And uh, input 3, max stockpile 30. It will be okay. It will require a bit more workers, but uh, after you set up everything initially, it will be good. Next one is supplies for this house. They have to be done fully as well, because without them, it won't work. So let's say um, aqueduct and wheat farms, right? Let's put them to priority 8. At production priority 9, we will either have apartments or the warehouse. So let's set it as default and apply to all. Same for the wheat farms. 8. There we go. That will allow us to have those buildings working at all times. If you have low amount of workers, they will supply those houses and everyone will be happy. Our next step is upgrading those houses to level 20 because we need that. Uh, how many of those do we have? Let's upgrade the rest of those woodcutters to level 20 if we haven't did that yet. Stone cutters and those houses will have to go. Not right now. I mean, they can go right now. They're very low level. So we will leave only six of those huts here and six of those houses. I started upgrading some of them to level 17 already. And uh, we want to upgrade the water sources as well. So this one, let's say this one, wheat is good. We got the wheat supplies here, so we can upgrade all those as well. So the, you see what I'm doing? I'm trying to get everything to high level really fast because that will allow us to um, get more benefits from it. All right, we can get this, but we can get some wonders going because I haven't actually ordered those. By the way, I recently figured out that you can check the effect of the wonder by pointing over the tier sign here. So if they won't give you a jest and bonuses, I usually build them next to my base because it looks cool there we go and now we have two buildings that have adjustment bonuses and we will place one of those over here because we got a lot of adjusting production buildings and second one is lighthouse of alexandria all adjusting buildings get more storage multiplier i don't even know where i will need it it's just a good wonder 
that's nice to have. So let's place it, well, wherever. Let's place it here. I haven't decided how it should work yet. So yeah, at this point, we got a couple of houses level 20. We got all huts level 20. I want to get them to 25, actually. That will take a while, but we have the resources. And we don't really need them at this point. And if, when, we will uh, use the pond or whatever, the grotto, they will get to level 30 after that and get the multiplier. Will be nice. Same with everything. Basically, I want everything level 25 by the time I will unlock the grotto. But before working on something that much, I want to make sure that that building isn't needed right now. So I don't want to upgrade way too many woodcutters, way too many different buildings because it will cost too much. So yeah, guys, we got the basics kind of set up here. Stuff are still being upgraded, some of those. We are still not in the perfect place in terms of the resources, but oh my God, so many new wonders. We can actually think about uh, building apartments already because we got that technology unlocked. Uh, we got full classical age research at this point and uh, we will do our best to do that, to achieve that. So I will need some place with the water resource and some free area without any stuff. I think this will be the best spot for it. Let's build some aqueducts here. Actually, at this point, we should get aqueducts in all the available areas because we will need a lot, a lot of water for um, upcoming production chains. And yeah, in this area, we will produce the grain and we will use it to produce more stuff from it. We will actually need a bit more wood for that because that's a lot of production. All right, so what do we do with the wheat? In order to supply the apartments, we will need several things. We will need meat, we will need cheese, and we will need bread. In order to create that, we need to make uh, production chains out of wheat and uh, water, basically. So first one is flour meal and then bakery. There we go, the bakery. The bakery is tier three building and one flour meal can support two bakeries and one bakery is enough for one uh, apartment building of the same level uh, by default. Then we'll get a livestock farm. Those things produce cows and milk and basically uh, once again, we need this one and we need it upgraded as well. And we will need to have the cheese makers. Cheese makers, there we go. One, two, three. So one cheese maker produced two milk, consumes two milk. One uh, livestock farm produced two milk. So uh, it should be one to one ratio in order to get the even production. By the way, do you remember production priorities? I think we will put wheat a bit higher and we'll put livestock a bit lower. So that stuff should be nine, I think. Okay, I changed my opinion. We will apply to all set as default nine for this and nine for water. And then uh, we will have this as seven because set as default apply to all same here. 7 priority, uh, set as default, apply to all, input 3 times, stockpile 25, set as default, apply to all, there we go. Why? Because that will allow us to produce that stuff if we don't have enough workers, but uh, on priority 8, we will have apartments that will consume those resources. And yeah, obviously you would like to upgrade the buildings a bit and you would like to increase the stockpile that will allow you to get the resources from faraway nodes in time otherwise it will not work and it was seven right same for the bakery and yeah here the main problem will be well the meat, wheat production will be okay i think it will be good because we got the bonuses from being next to the water we got the alps bonuses when we get it to level 20 it's even higher 100 production over here so the wheat is kind of okay i think the main issue will be water for the bakery because it still requires quite a good amount of water that we don't really have. And let's build some apartment buildings here so you can see the difference, like how much apartments buildings consume of the resources. Why the hell lumber mill doesn't deliver anywhere? Look at that. This building needs lumber. It's not going from here. Same for 
This building, it doesn't get anything from it. The hell? We have 400k lumber in those two buildings, which is not being used at all. I could get those bonuses already. If we'll increase the priority, will it change something? 10? So here we get the apartment, and one apartment requires one cheese, two meat, and one bread. Uh, in our scenario, one cheese maker can support two apartment buildings, one livestock farm can support two apartment buildings, and one bakery can support one apartment buildings. But since one floor meal can support two bakeries, it's basically one floor meal per apartment. Okay, let's uh, build more of those, and let's upgrade these as well to level 10. And yeah, guys, another thing that I've just noticed it seems that in the game, the order of these resources that uh, the building requires matters. Before it will start getting the first resource, it won't request the second resource. I had this issue with the lumber mill that uh, almost killed me, I mean, mentally, because they were full and they weren't delivering that wood anywhere, the lumber, and as soon as we finished the first cap, like bricks, for example, over here, the wood started coming in as well. The same was for the wonder and for other stuff, so it seems that you first need to fulfill the first line, then the second, then the third. And as soon as you will get the first one filled up, the others will come as well. I don't know how it works, it's weird, but that's how it is right now. Maybe it will change in the future, I hope it will. So yeah, you can see here that on this building they are bringing in the bricks and don't get in any lumber before the bricks will be here, so uh, you should keep it in mind when you are planning your future construction. If you don't remember where the required building is, or uh, you want to make sure how to create something, you can use search stuff over here, search bar, in order to get the building that have required item in them. Full name or any resource will do. So I was looking for Iron Forge, and there it is. Let's make two of those. One over there and one over here. This is interesting. I got to the Middle Age, and this time, I think I've got the new uh, great persons. Because I didn't have Rurik for sure with two happiness. I don't remember other guys as well, but I want this one with two happiness. That's two more buildings for us. That's nice. What I'm doing right now, I'm making the paper production, because paper using the mm, libraries can be turned into science. So that's a really interesting way of doing that. Uh, let's try to do that. It requires wood though, which we lack. So that's why we are occupying all the logging areas available for us. So we'll need wood and water, so it's pretty expensive, but in the end, it will be worth it. And in the middle, I'm building the Chichen Itza uh, that will boost the surrounding building's production. So that will be our knowledge production area, basically. So yeah, I have level 10 of those over here, and uh, one paper maker without the wonder creates uh, 30 paper, one library. Holy moly, consumes 120 paper because of the research of geography. How many do we need? Let's calculate. My god, that's insane. So basically, per four paper makers of level 10, we can have one library. Uh, wow. I don't need that many now, because it's too expensive. <laughs> Let's upgrade them to level 20 then. So oh, guys, we got to the point where most of our building that are 25, we got stuff rolling over here, not as fast as I want to, but we will fix that once we build this wonder. What I want to do right now is to get some of those housing over here. Where are they? Huts, bam. So we will explore the rest of the map and find the last wonder. That will allow us to increase our basic resource production quite a lot. Before doing that, make sure that nothing is being upgraded, otherwise those buildings won't get the buff. So yeah, it's pretty important to make sure that you're doing it right. Honestly, I think it's the most annoying part of the game when you do the restart to go and scout the map. It's Taking a bit too, uh, too long and it, it's not fun, basically. Okay, let's put it like that. Also, it will therefore will lower your uh, morale and people will be unhappy. Happiness is low, you will lose workers and you might ruin your production lines. And that's why, look at that, we are at 5k right now. 
That's why we did the right decision by making it uh, independent. So when we will destroy everything and get back to the normal happiness, we will keep our production back, I hope. Well, we're back, but we haven't found the wonder yet. It's taken a while. Oh my god, I opened most of the map, but I can't find it yet. By the way, take a look at my total empire value right now. When we will find the wonder, it should go up drastically. Uh, I'm actually curious to see how it will be. It's 216 now. It's 433 right now. We found it somewhere. Uh, not here. So it basically doubled and we almost got access to another great person. There it is. So now let's just clear the rest of the fog because I don't like fog. And there we go. So, uh, so when my happiness got lower than before, it's not that high. I hope I, it will rise back. Uh, we need to build stuff here. Let's build an aqueduct. This building will allow us to get free buildings, basically, without happiness debuff. Oh, I forgot to upgrade this building to level uh, 25. But yeah, anyway, uh, huts will hold 210 workers. Those will hold 600. It's all good. And take a look at all that crazy production that we have here with level 30 tier 1 buildings. That will be enough to do crazy upgrades right now if you want to play further in the late game. That will be the best start for you because uh, we end up somewhere at the end of the middle age. It took me, I would say, about 4 to 5 hours to do that real time. So I took a break for like 20 minutes, uh, 1 hour, and uh, did the next step. But after that, you get way better start because upgrading those buildings to level 30 will take forever. And you get a really good resource base right now that you can use. And if some of the buildings are not there yet, bam, you can upgrade them. And don't worry about lack of resources because you've got all the best stuff ready for you. Yeah, I don't think that we need that many libraries, to be honest. By the way, the libraries produce 2k signs each. And in terms of the science, let's take a look. Come on, back, back, back. Over here. Uh, worker science production is 45-60k. But we have most of our workers unavailable yet. Not, not all of the buildings are active. We have a lack of bread. So there we go. That's our apartments. Uh, I almost forgot you to tell that I put it on 8 priority because that will allow them to be right after the houses and house production buildings so those things will stay those things will stay and then if we will have not not enough population they will work before those will collapse so that's really um, interesting idea I don't know how it will work long term yet so it's um concept basically but we will see how it will work so far they're working most of the time but not all the time though they are using up their resources way too fast or maybe i just don't produce enough meat yeah we are not producing enough meat which is weird ah we need more okay there we go a bit more of those livestock farms solved the issue Whew, now we have stable 50k population which is good enough for pretty good research we got to renaissance era already so we got the optics we can also get a uh, lower tier research in order to get to other technologies and get extra happiness. And for the warehouse, I want to use autopilot mode. I wanted to import the required resources for buildings and deliver them here in this radius. Let's try it first. Wait, so we have bread, we have cheese and we have meat and we will import them and make cap and we will make this a priority of nine so it will be above priority of apartments and i hope that will make apartments import stuff from the warehouse but i'm not really sure because we are using a lot of population of workers that to travel things around look at that transportation 900 p I, I mean 1k in comparison with like 6k workers overall isn't that much but I want to be able to avoid that if possible. Oh yeah, and we are done with the Itza. And uh, now we produce 100 paper per building. Not bad. But we, <laughs> we require 460 paper per library now. So they produce 8k signs, by the way. That's interesting. Oh yeah, I wanted to check how much science do we produce from population 100 so it's about 10 percent basically 10 to 15 percent of science not that much let's build the new wonders that don't require nearby tiles 
Oh, this is good. All adjacent buildings get plus one worker capacity multiplier. We'll use it for the new research site. Yeah, we will do that. Mm, there is a lot of area here, so let's make it here. We have the schools now, and the schools will help us with the science production as well. But the schools require special things. We got the mosque for that, to produce the religion, and they will also require, I think, poems. Let's wait till they will be constructed. Yeah, they need poems. We can see it here, faith and poems. While faith is kind of easy with the mosques, they just need cheese and marble. In order to get the marble, you just need to properly upgrade the marble production building or just create several of them. That will be kind of easy. And cheese is anyway being overproduced over here. We have more than we actually need. And it will clog the production line for me because it's not required that much. So they are pretty much necessary anyway. Because in order to get the poems, we need writer's guild that will use paper again and uh, we don't have enough paper anyway so let's add some writers guild over here and see how it will go for us we don't get any more boosting stuff for that so that's everything we can get and they consume two paper to get two poem and yeah i'm not really sure about that let's delete the extra schools we don't need them anymore anyway we need to upgrade those to level 30 i think let's go so there we go we got enough marble we got the mosques I don't know how they're pronounced, honestly. Uh, and now we need a bit more cheese, which is actually good news because, uh, yeah, the cheese is an issue. The good thing, though, that production priority is going towards the apartment, not uh, for those buildings. That, theoretically, <laughs> means that they will not use the resources too much. Let's actually check this out. I'm actually curious about that. And it seems it doesn't work that way. So the priority is only amount of workers right now we don't have enough cheese for our apartments we have six one two three four five each of those produce 80 cheese they consume 60 cheese so that should be sufficient yeah basically we have more cheese production than we need here but i think it's going it's not going anywhere as, as well oh we have this one not being upgraded that's why and yeah, you can see that some buildings have been clogged with milk. So we will have to create extra cheese factories. Oh, getting the paper up to level 30 will take forever. It's taking one hour to get it to level uh, 27. And the uh, higher it is, the harder it will be. I think I will just cancel it after the next level. So we will be able to get the production going and then we'll see what to do. So there we go. One school consumes uh those are bop by the way that that's not fair comparison we got the ah this mausoleum will automatically transfer resources that's it okay so yeah one school consumes 11 faith and 11 poem and produces 2.2 k science now this is good that will allow us to get pretty decent science and uh, uh we don't know how much one writer's gold produce because we got those high level so there we go, level 10 school consumes 120 faith and poems and produce 24k science. Uh, how much science do we produce by default? 126, so that's 20% uh, per building. That's a really efficient way to get extra science. Let's put it like that, way more efficient than libraries, I say. But we need decent supply of poems for that. We need decent supply of paper and in order to get decent supply of paper we need a lot of wood water and everything else let's take a look if we are balanced in that we need a bit more faith flour horses lumber paper poems and tools okay it's not that bad it's not that bad those resources can be scaled take a look at this time but by the next morning it will be done of course it will take about a night to get them to level 30 but i don't think it will go over that anymore like it won't go higher so yeah that's what we've got after playing the, almost the whole day do we get the new technology though oxford university each building upgrade in your empire provides plus one science per cycle not bad so yeah, over time we can build more production lines here for things that we are missing and we will need but right now it already looks pretty good I wouldn't say it's perfect. Uh, moreover, 
we managed to balance uh, workers here. So they are not that busy delivering stuff from each other. They don't consume that many resources for that. And it also looks pretty beautiful and compact, if you ask me. I like that. Although there is one drawback with that. Uh, that's busy workers produce more signs than idle workers. But that's risky because if you will keep most of your workers busy, things can go downhill really, really fast. But yeah, we got bunch of wonders, we got bunch of production going, apartments are happy, paper makers will be happy tomorrow. We could produce more paper makers. We can actually do them here. That will allow them to automatically deliver stuff to the writer's guild. Let's do that, by the way. That seems like a good idea since we got that much happiness. But yeah, it's not the best way to deal with the situation. I wish I would be able to go to level 20 in two clicks. Here we are. So with additional paper production lines, we should be way better. They actually deliver a little bit to the libraries as well. But yeah, we can also upgrade schools to get even higher production, but we are low on faith right now. So upgrading stuff over time will make everything better in your game. The only thing you gotta make sure of that your production of specific buildings have the required supply. Otherwise, if you leave the game running overnight or something like that, you might run in trouble. So yeah, take a look. Glorious town of 58k people. We can get more if we want to, but right now I want to I want to focus on other production lines. Yeah, everything works well. There are some uh, small hiccups here and there, some why we don't have enough marble, even though it should be more than enough. I actually know why. Because Oxford University is building and it's pulling a lot of marble. And we got 1 million total empire value by now and a lot of space that we can use later on if we will get enough happiness, which won't happen. So yeah, guys, uh, that will be it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Write in the comments what do you think about the game so far and my playthrough. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. All those actions will promote the video in the YouTube algorithm and I would appreciate that quite a lot. Also check out the video description for the playlist with other episodes. My other YouTube channels like PC Gaming channel right now needs your support with the subs. I'm playing City Builders there. Basically same stuff, but better graphics. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. It's been Stan Kosh. Have a good one. Bye.